DSPY, the ChatGPT moment of prompt engineering has arrived. There's so many relationships going on. The DSPY pipeline is driven by modules. We want to ask better questions. Why do you have to make it so complicated? This is apparently not correct. He did not co-found SpaceX with other people. Hallucination is still happening in Rack system. It responded, I don't know the answer. What happened? Why? This reasoning does not really make sense to me at all. The DSPY framework has caught a lot of attention recently because of its potential to create pipelines that can learn and improve themselves automatically, which probably means that developers don't need to rely as much on fine-tuning prompt templates manually. In this video, we want to build our custom DSPY pipeline by integrating knowledge graphs because knowledge graphs have the ability to provide rich contextual information. We're going to test if this pipeline can enhance the system's retrieval and reasoning abilities. So Let's dive in. This time, we're going to use Elon's Wikipedia page as our knowledge source. And why we chose to do that? Because we're going to integrate knowledge graphs into our DSPY pipeline. So this is Elon's Wikipedia page, right? As your first glance to his Wikipedia page, you probably can already tell there will be a lot of relationships. And what really makes knowledge graphs stand out is their ability to capture and organize relationships. So how are we going to turn everything we see here into a knowledge graph? Well, we have the Thoughts Natural Language API which automatically extracts entities and relationships in the article. What does Elon's knowledge graph look like? Okay, so this is all relationships and entities from the Wikipedia page we saw here. There's so many relationships going on and it's quite visually intimidating to watch. I love knowledge graphs, but this is a little bit too much for me. The main message is right now the information is being interconnected and when you zoom out, it actually becomes a kind of map. So what are we going to do with this map? Well, later I'll show you how the DSPY pipeline can navigate through the relationships to find relevant information and generate answers for us. Guys, are you still with me? Let's circle back to our notebook. Let's now look at the DSPY pipeline for Rack. Of course, we need to first set up our vector database or graph database externally, but this is the entire pipeline that will be retrieving information from our knowledge base. The entire code may look confusing at first glance, but you just have to keep in mind two main things happening here. The DSPY pipeline is driven by modules, which literally tells the pipeline which direction to go. And the modules further follow the more specific instructions defined in signature. And the entire pipeline we see here is essentially doing three things. First, it called the retrieve module, which is essentially our Chroma DB retrieval model to get relevant information to our question. Here, the context literally means the relevant documents being retrieved and then the pipeline will tune the original question based on the context. Finally, it moves on to the last step to generate answer by following the instructions defined in signature, like a very brief and short description in signatures. And when each module is being called in the DSPY pipeline, it further traces down the more specific instructions defined in signatures. Now kind of see the pipeline works, right? So let's now move on to the more specific pipeline that we design ourselves. This code may look daunting to you. That's okay. What you really need to focus is this part. As we mentioned previously, we want to ask better questions. And how are we going to do that? We want to refine the questions with the context provided with our knowledge graph because knowledge graphs cover relationships between the different information. So it can provide more comprehensive context around the information we want. Here we define two signatures. The first one is to refine our questions with the context provided in our knowledge graph. And the second signature here is literally telling the whole system to summarize and organize information from both our vector database and the context data from our knowledge graph. So let's focus on this implementation part. It first refines our query with our knowledge graph metadata and further use that refined query to retrieve relevant information from the vector database. So now that it has both information from knowledge graphs and vector database, it's time to summarize and organize everything. And that's how our final answer is being generated. And at this point, you're probably thinking, why do you have to make it so complicated? We can just use the vanilla DSPY rack pipeline. 
Yeah, you're totally right. So in our next step, we're actually gonna see how both pipelines work by testing some questions. Let's look at our first question. What type of industries is Neuralink in? In case you're not that familiar with Neuralink, they recently got a lot of attention because they implanted brain chips in people and this patient was able to play online chess using his thoughts. And this is the answer that it gave us. Biotech, neuroscience, and artificial intelligence. Let's see how it reached that conclusion. Okay, so this is the reasoning. Let's see. To be honest, I don't really see a connection between the reasoning part and the answer generation part, but the answer looks correct, right? Well, when we're not sure if the information is correct or not, we can go back to our knowledge graph and fact check. I asked exactly the same question, computer interface, neurotechnology. This is information from our knowledge graph. So in our knowledge graph, Neuralink is not categorized as an artificial intelligence company. If we go to their Wikipedia page, it's not categorized in the AI industry. However, when I chatted with the bot LLM, which you can find in the GPT store, it says Neuralink is primarily in the neurotechnology industry, focusing on developing brain machine interfaces. Their work can intersect with artificial intelligence. So this this may leave room to interpret that Neuralink is in the AI industry. Anyways, the main point is not to debate whether it's an AI or not. What I'm going to show you is let's put it under a narrow scope, which we exclude artificial intelligence this time and make the DSPY pipeline. Follow the ground truth in our knowledge graph to generate answers. We first initiated the pipeline integrated with knowledge graphs. Here's the answer we got. Again, let's see how it reasons. So now the reasoning process is guided with information from our knowledge graph. So I think this is a more solid reasoning than what we saw previously. And now you can kind of see how language models or the pipeline we set up here can further navigate through the information if you have your ground truth set up in your knowledge graph. And again, my point is not to debate whether Neuralink is an AI or not. The main point here is you can have your domain specific information grounded in knowledge graphs to further guide language models on how to better retrieve information. This one's going to be more fun. So why specifically pay this question is because this query actually will require language models to identify relationships. So this is a part of knowledge graph where you see a companies which Elon co-founded with other key people where he founded himself such as XAI, the boring company. So now you have the picture in mind. Let's go back to see how the vanilla pipeline handles this query. And now look at the answer returns. Do you spot anything wrong? There's already something weird happening here. And let's go down and see what the reasoning process looks like. Well, Actually, there isn't quite any reasoning going on. This is apparently not correct. He did not co-found SpaceX with other people. He founded XAI by himself. There's already some mistakes happening here. Let's remind ourselves that we actually have a rack system here. I think what we see just now is hallucination is still happening in rack system. We have pretty much the correct information being retrieved, but we're still getting the wrong information returned. Things can still go wrong, both in the retrieval or the generation process. And you have to set up mechanisms to ensure each component in the system if they're doing their job right. But it's okay. As we showed previously, we have a knowledge graph to reference our ground truth, right? So what we see here is actually the correct structured output from our knowledge graph. But what you're gonna see funny here is after translating the correct structured output into natural language, it was responded, I don't know the answer. What happened? Why? This is also why, personally, I prefer passing the structure output directly into the pipeline because adding a translation process is not necessary and can cause trouble. If you still remember in our previous example, the correct information is being retrieved and language model has no problem translating. This is working fine. This is great. But see what happened here correct information but wrong translation. So now you're probably questioning, why didn't I want to just pass the structured outputs directly into the DSPY pipeline? Because if we go back to how the pipeline is set up, it's true that this is set as stream. Why wasn't it set as dictionary? It's because I tried, but currently types other than streams are not supported. And the author and creator of DSPY library, Omar, also suggested converting to stream is the easiest way to make everything work. So I know the community is growing really fast and this probably will not be an issue anymore. So back to our example, if you want to incorporate knowledge graph in your system and the design of your pipeline, is translating structured outputs from let's say knowledge graph metadata necessary? Does that further add another layer of complexity, unexpected, and undesired outcomes. When you add this layer of translation, 
How do you want to test and control the undeterministic nature of language models? So now I'm going to use not the smartest way to pass our knowledge graph data into a pipeline. Finger crossed. Here's what we got. According to KG Data, Elon Musk is the co-founder for several companies, including SpaceX as Corp. This is not the right answer. Let's see what's actually going on. So it does have the KG contacts we provided. And then the reasoning here, not very informative. Further extract passages where the passages are the same. And then final reasoning, we can use KG data. Yeah, and KG data is being provided up here. Cross-reference this information, filter any irrelevant information. So Elon Musk is listed as a co-founder, including SpaceX, Tesla, x -Corp. I mean, SpaceX, XAI are not in our KG data. So this reasoning does not really make sense to me at all. Even if we provide our KG data, it somehow still doesn't incorporate correctly, I would say. I really don't know. I may have done something wrong along the way. The entire notebook is open. You can find it in my GitHub repo and appreciate anyone telling me where I can do better and improve. I was hoping the KG data can help instruct the pipeline, but in our second question, it doesn't look that successful. I know there's another piece of the DSPR pipeline where they would include optimizer component. If we're going to do that, we need to include some training data sets, such as key value pairs of question and answers will be potentially doing that in the next video. Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. Hopefully see you in the next one on DSPI 2.